Take a look at a network switch and you may notice a port that looks slightly different from the rest. So what exactly is this port? And is there actually anything that makes it different? I'll explain all of this and more in today's video. Hey everyone, it's Chris here from Home Network Geek where we talk about everything home networking. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop it a like and also consider subscribing to the channel. Now let's jump straight in with what the word uplink even means. The term uplink is commonly used in three different ways, despite them all being used in the context of internet transmissions. Because of this, it's easy for the term to be used incorrectly at times. The first use of the word uplink refers to an uplink port. Now this is a specialist type of ethernet port found on some networking equipment which allows them to communicate with each other. Previously, these devices will have had to rely on what's known as a crossover cable to communicate. But the uplink port has replaced the need for this specialist cable by performing the switch in direction internally. We'll talk a bit more about uplink ports specifically in just a moment. When the term uplink is used in satellite communications, it refers to the transmission of radio waves. These radio waves travel from a transmitter down here on the ground up to a satellite in the sky. As you would expect, this is the opposite to downlink, where the radio waves travel from the satellite down to the transmitter. Although it is quite rare these days, some people still have to rely on satellite-based internet connectivity, as they simply don't have access to DSL or cable modem. In this case, the internet uplink refers to the connection from the device on the ground up to the satellite. Now just to make things that bit more confusing for us, wireless internet service providers will use the term uplink as a way of referring to a specific type of connection in wireless networking. Take your smartphone for example. When you're not connected to your home's Wi-Fi, instead you'll be using what's known as either cellular data or mobile data. Ultimately, these devices get their internet connectivity by connecting to physical towers which are responsible for sending and receiving radio signals. So in this context, the word uplink refers to your device sending data via one of these towers. As you'd expect, downlink refers to when you receive data from the internet via the towers. The downlink is a connection that's made in the opposite direction to an uplink. For us who want to know about home networking, this refers to the comms from an outside network into our own local networks. It can almost be thought of like the communication down the chain of command. The CIO would delegate a task to the IT director, who would then delegate the task to the IT manager. The communication starts at the top and works its way down, similarly to how a downlink works in computer networking. Some pieces of networking hardware, mainly switches and routers, will have a dedicated port which is known as the uplink port. This port allows for communication between two like devices, such as two network switches or a router with a modem. Although the uplink port can look like a regular ethernet port, what you'll find is that these pieces of hardware will likely only have the one uplink port. But it's not as if you have to guess which of the ports is the uplink port. You'll often find the name printed alongside the port, or it may even be a completely different colour to the rest. Some routers that you and I use at home won't actually refer to it as an uplink port. Instead, it could be labelled as a WAN port or an internet port. Either way, regardless of the name, they all work in the same way. In the case of home networking, the uplink port can be used in a variety of ways, but they all essentially expand the network. It can be used to connect routers, switches and hubs as a way of increasing the maximum number of wired connections available to you, but this has become slightly less relevant with the ever-expanding use of Wi-Fi, which is simply convenient and easy to access. Still, they can be useful when used correctly. Let's take a look at how the uplink port can be used on these different devices. The majority of routers that we'll use at home are known as combination devices. Some will include the router and a switch, whereas others will include the router, the switch, and the modem all within the single unit. Now the ethernet ports found on the back of the router may all look the same, but some of them will perform different functions. The WAN port can be used to connect to the internet through a modem, and the uplink port can be used to connect to other networking equipment. You could connect something like a network switch to the uplink port, but if you were to plug in a regular device like a laptop, you'd find it didn't work. The remaining ethernet ports found on the router can be used to connect to your regular devices, such as a PC or a smart TV, for example. The major difference between a switch and a hub comes down to bandwidth. A switch will give each of its connections its own bandwidth, whereas a hub has to share a single bandwidth with all of the devices connected to it. Back in the day, switches were very expensive compared to hubs, but these days they've become so much more affordable that they've pretty much phased out hubs completely. They are simply much more capable devices, whilst also not costing a huge amount to buy. Your typical router would only have five ethernet ports, 
whereas a network switch could have up to 48. Assuming it does have 48, connecting the devices together will give you a total of 53 Ethernet ports to play with. On an unmanaged switch, you can expect any of the Ethernet ports to be the uplink port, but if you have a managed switch, which is a much more capable device, you'll likely find it has a dedicated uplink port. In some home networks, the modem will still be a separate device that sits alongside the router. In this case, the uplink port could be used to connect the modem to the router to provide it with internet services. Whereas the uplink port is designed to share a connection with the devices, the WAN port works slightly differently in that it splits the connection instead. If your internet connection is shared over the uplink port, you'd find that only one of your devices can access the internet at any given time. And this is where you should be connecting a router to your modem, not individual devices. If you head on over to homenetworkgeek.com, I have a dedicated article that talks all about this. Now that you know where the uplink port can be used as part of a home network, it's worth keeping in mind a few cases where it shouldn't be used. There are two situations you'll want to avoid if you have a network switch that has a dedicated uplink port. Now that's very important. It must have a dedicated uplink port. The first is connecting a regular device such as your PC or your smart TV uh, to the uplink port. And you'll also want to avoid connecting two uplink ports together. Just make sure you check the port that you're plugging the device into before you actually get connected. If it is a different colour to all the other ports, chances are it's going to be the uplink port. I briefly mentioned crossover cables earlier, so I wanted to take a moment just to talk about them in a bit more depth. There is a specific type of ethernet cable that is designed to connect two pieces of networking equipment with each other. Unlike regular ethernet cable, which can also be referred to as a straight through cable, Crossover cables actually use two different wiring standards. One end uses T568A standard, and the other end meets the T568B standard. The internal wiring found within the crossover cable reverses the transmit and receive signals. Now you may be wondering why you would use a crossover cable when a lot of the networking hardware out there these days has an uplink port which allows you to use the regular straight through cable. To be honest, crossover cables aren't used anywhere near as much as they used to be. Thanks to most devices having an uplink port, the need for a crossover cable has been pretty much removed. One way to identify a crossover cable is to check the order in which the colored wires are arranged. But an easier way is to just check the text that's printed on the outer sheathing. This will tell you if it's a crossover cable. Whereas a traditional uplink port would only support network uplink devices, dual purpose ports have been developed to act as either an uplink port or your regular ethernet port, depending on the device that you're connecting to it. Thankfully, most of the routers that we'll use at home do feature dual purpose ports. This is useful in that you can actually make use of a port that would otherwise have previously gone to waste if you didn't have any network uplink devices to connect to it. So that's a quick overview of uplink ports and how they work in the context of home networking. If you take one thing from this video, let it be that it reverses the transmit and receive signals found within a regular ethernet cable and allows you to connect two like networking devices with each other. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you did, it'd be great if you could drop it a like and subscribe to the channel. And whilst you're there, don't forget to turn on those notifications to keep up with everything home networking. If you have any other questions on home networking, be sure to drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.